This week's Wheel and Anchor webinar, we are going to be covering the African Rail Odyssey. Um, this is a, an epic journey that we have uh, planned for 2024. So it's two years out. Uh, but uh, as you'll hear from Alicia in a moment, uh, uh, you know, travel is, is going nuts sort of everywhere and programs like this that are very specialized uh, have to be uh, planned a long time in advance. I'm coming to you today from the beautiful north coast of Sicily here in Cefalu. I'm doing research for our upcoming Live Away Part 2 uh, to Sicily. So just to let you know where I'm at, um, Alicia, who's normally from South Africa, is uh, in uh, Arizona today, and Paula, of course, uh, sitting faithfully at her home office in, in Pembroke. <laughs> Good morning, everybody. Um, so let's get started. Let me say a couple of words, first of all, about Wheel and Anchor, and I, we just uh, stuck in a few photos here from some of our most recent trips. Um, we've had some terrific trips so far this year. We're very excited. And the theme about all of our trips, beyond the amazing destinations that we go and beyond the fact that we travel slow, um, we like to take our time and spend uh, a little bit of extra time or a lot of extra time in places to allow ourselves to get a, familiarized with the local culture and tradition and so on. But it's also about community. And this is, uh, for me, really uh, uh, the core part of Wheel and Anchor and why um, people are, are are so excited about what we're trying to do here because you know let's face it when we travel it's always great to travel with people who are like-minded with other Canadians um, and who just have a, have a view of the world and about how how we should be traveling and venturing out those of us that are fortunate to be able to travel uh, and I think we have that sort of shared respect all of the philosophies that form part of our travelers creed that you would have seen when you joined us um, and, you know, again, a part of that is what being well-traveled is all about. That is, uh, again, not, it's not just about the bucket list, but it's really about, um, you know, having these immersive kind of experiences and, and these, you know, not only exotic experiences, but also the ones that are um, perhaps a bit more familiar, like here in Central Europe. Um, and uh, as I say, in the context of all that, we become connected to the communities that we visit, that we stay in, um, and the people that we meet along the way, and to one another as part of our community. So that's the vision of Wheel and Anchor, and that vision wouldn't be possible if it weren't for our amazing team. Um, so uh, a, a few of them here. My name is Gordon. If uh, you haven't uh, met me before, I'm the founder of Wheel and Anchor, um, and I'm joined by my colleague Joel, who's in the background that does our technical support and all of our marketing and makes these beautiful webinars. Paula Sarnik, who I know a lot of you have spoken to, is our senior trip specialist and deals with all of your inquiries and bookings and so on. And our special guest, Alicia Talyard from Rovos, South Africa. Welcome, Alicia. Thank you for getting up early uh, in central time or mountain time or whatever time zone you're in <laughs> to join us today and, uh, and tell us a little bit about uh, our journey on the Rovos Rail from Cape Town to Dar es Salaam. Uh, our agenda as usual, um, those of you that are interested, and I know people that we, we had a series last year about iconic rail journeys, this is certainly one of them. Um, and so I, with the help of Alicia, are gonna take you on a bit of a tour today from Cape Town to Dar es Salaam. Uh, and I just wanted to pop in this picture here because um, this gentleman that, Staying beside me is uh, Mr. Rohan Voss. He is the owner, the founder of Robos Rail. That's where the name comes from, Rohan Voss, Robos. Uh, and uh, I've had the pleasure of meeting him on a couple of occasions. Um, and he is like a mentor for me in terms of the whole vision and, and the delivery of hospitality that he has created at Robos Rail since he started it back in the late 80s. Uh, and so uh, this this man is an icon as far as rail journeys around the world is concerned. And, um, you know, as I say, I've had the pleasure of talking to him and talking about some of the aspirations we have um, as far as rail journeys and wheel and anchor. So uh, just to give you some perspective, um, this is a family owned business and it shows off in so many ways because, you know, you just you can feel that no matter whether you're talking to part of the team like Alicia or anybody on the train or anybody, they're all, everybody is so friendly and it is so committed to ensuring that everybody has a great time. And that's the experience of Robos. So let's get into the itinerary. Um, here is a map. 
So in case you, you know, sort of weren't familiar, I know you throw names out there like Cape Town and Dar es Salaam. And so most people are aware, of course, Cape Town, way down in the southern tip of South Africa. And our journey by rail goes all the way up through South Africa. It, we pass through uh, Botswana into Zimbabwe. We cross uh, at Victoria Falls into Zambia and then up continuing up through into uh, Tanzania where we end the trip up. And so we cover literally half a continent. Um, and so uh, we'll get into that uh, a little bit more as uh, Alicia helps me talk about the day by day itinerary. If you're going all that way, of course, you're probably gonna spend a few extra days uh, uh, before and after the trip. So we've put together some lovely pre and post tours. First of all, uh, our pre tour will be a five night adventure uh, in the Cape Winelands, uh, culminating then in Cape Town. So if you're not familiar with that, this is the area just to the north of uh, Cape Town. They have these spectacular mountains, these beautiful green valleys, uh, and towns like Stellenbosch, you've probably heard of. If you drank South African wine before, it's one of the biggest towns in this area uh, and uh, is where uh, sort of the heart of the winemaking is. And we're going to be staying at a lovely place in the village, the town of Franschhoek, uh, which is like French hook um, set amongst the mountains at a beautiful resort called Mont Rochelle um, and where we're going to have a, a, a great way to relax and start off uh, particularly you know we're going to arrive be chauffeured up from the airport in Cape Town it's only about uh, an hour an hour and a half away from the airport um, and uh, we're going to have time to relax and get over that jet lag um, and enjoy this beautiful countryside um, of course uh, we'll have a host there in all likelihood it'll be me who uh, you know, points you out some of the things, how to enjoy the beautiful Cape Winelands area. We're of course gonna have a wonderful special tasting dinner and you're gonna get to sample. One of the things that I love most about South Africa, which is the culinary scene. Um, and so a lot of people, when we think about South Africa, we don't, you know, we think about the game reserves like Kruger and so on. But uh, uh, the, the, the biggest surprise to those who have not traveled there before is uh, what incredible um, culinary experts they are. And that doesn't matter if you're going to sort of ordinary uh, run-of-the-mill local restaurants or fine dining. Um, it is excellent food throughout. And so we're going to explore that for the first few days, staying up in Franschhoek at Mont Rochelle. Um, we're going to check out, we're going to do a tour and tastings in and around um, Stellenbosch and, and Franschhoek. Uh, and, and again, this whole area, and you're just going to be mesmerized uh, by the beautiful scenery, the great food and the wine tasting that we're going to do. And uh, so after the first few days of relaxing in the countryside, we'll head back into the city, um, going into Cape Town, which certainly needs no introduction here and an epic view of Table Mountain and, uh, and uh, you know, the whole city. Uh, and we're going to spend a, a couple of nights at the Mount Nelson Hotel, which recently or a few years back became a Belmont Hotel is the most iconic hotel in the city. Uh, and from here, we're going to have time to uh, obviously explore again the food aspect of, of Cape Town, um, take in the wonderful scenery. You might join me with a, uh, you know, a walk up uh, uh, Table Mountain if for the really ambitious, or we can always take the cable car up. Um, but we're also going to take a day to go down and visit uh, the Cape of Good Hope, Cape Point, as it's known as locally, um, visiting the penguins at, uh, at Boulders. Even if you've done this before, it's uh, I've done it numerous times, you always get a charge out of this uh, incredible landscape that forms the, um, it's not the most southern tip of Africa, but the most famous um, southern uh, peninsula in Africa. And so that's um, what uh, we're going to do as our pre-program. Um, and then, of course, on our last overnight in Cape Town, before we board the train, um, we'll then get up and be welcomed onto Robos. And so this is where Alicia, uh, I get to uh, bring you in on, on our program. And first of all, we're going to talk a little bit about uh, Robos itself and the experience on the train, because that's kind of what this is all about. Everything else is the bonus. So Alicia, I've done all the yapping now. <laughs> Your turn. Um, tell us a little bit about the, the train, uh, the carriages on the train. What is this experience all about? Well, the train is really an amazing way to get in touch with everything around you. It's a complete switch off. 
Um, we don't have any Wi-Fi on board. There's no televisions on board. So you really take the time to get to know the people around you. Um, it's usually a nice mix of guests on board from all over the world. And then, of course, instead of flying and missing out on all that beautiful scenery, you can sit back and relax with a glass of wine in your hand and really take in the sights as we travel at a very slow pace across the country. Uh, so exactly. you're getting a, a nice feel of that distance that you're traveling and getting to see the local communities as you're traveling. And as we see here from these photos, these rail carriages are like traveling back in time. They're 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 incredibly well restored. Can you say a few words about that, about the, the, the feeling, the ambiance on board as I go through these uh, these photos? Yeah, we really um, hark back to a, a past era, the um, Victorian era, if I could say. Um, it's an old world style of travel. The dining cars, uh, we have a, a focus on local cuisine, but it's uh, also a team of enthusiastic chefs that cater to every need. There's lots of public spaces to enjoy. The lounge car that's um, pictured at the moment is where we'll also host lectures on board. There's various bar, car and bar cars where you can relax and enjoy a drink. We have some board games and card games on board that you can play as well. Um, and then in the evening, we do also like to go through everybody's photos on the screen in the lounge car. So there's really where on other trains, the focus would be a lot on the off train experience on Rovos. It's all about that onboard experience um, and getting to know the people around you, as I've mentioned. Yeah, it's it's I, I, I remember I did it years back and uh, it still resonates with me as one of the most memorable trips I ever did. I was only on board for a few days, but it's kind of like being in this grand, old, beautifully restored hotel. And yet you have the majestic scenery of Africa that's constantly going past you <laughs> on the screen, which is the windows as you look outside. Um, tell us a bit about the experience on board in terms of the, you know, the day to day, the flow, the meals, like what kind of happens uh, on a robust train? Well, usually um, breakfast would be at leisure from about seven to 10 in the morning. If we have a morning activity scheduled, it would usually be three to four hours in length. Um, but whenever there is not an activity, we usually have a lecture on board, as I've mentioned, where we'd all gather in the lounge car and our historian extraordinaire, Nicholas Schofield, uh, would do a nice talk or a question and answer session, um, keeping guests entertained. He really sets the scene and brings everything to life wherever we are. Uh, lunch is then enjoyed in the dining cars from around one o'clock in the afternoon afternoon. It's usually a four course lunch, um, each course paired with lovely South African wines. So it's like a tasting experience. You uh, put big focus on the culinary experience in South Africa and the train is no different. Um, and then in the afternoons, we'd again either have an excursion or do a nice um, lecture or question answer session again and meeting in the lounge car then again at four o'clock for tea and cake. At 6 p.m. we serve canapes and drinks in the lounge and observation cars and then ready at 7.30 for dinner. Um, so you can see there's a big focus on meals on board the train. The food really <laughs> is exquisite um, and always time for a drink. But we make sure there's plenty of activities in between as well to keep you entertained. Absolutely. Nobody is going to starve on one of these trips, but it's beyond just that. It's the quality, every meal so carefully prepared. Uh, it's like fine dining experience from the moment you get on the train until the very end. So the accommodation comes in a couple of different categories. Say a few words for us about um, the different carriages and the cabins and sort of how all that works. We have three different categories on board. The image featured here is our entry level, the Pullman Gold Suite. It is either a double or a separate twin bed. The wonderful thing about Rovos is that each and every room is en suite with a toilet, shower and basin. Um, every room is individually air conditioned. Our deluxe and royal suites have um, mini bars and tea and coffee facilities. The image here is our deluxe suite has a bit more floor space with a separate lounge area um, and all the rooms also have that tea and coffee facilities and um, the bathrooms are very spacious the royal suites really stand out um, which is our top category featured in this image here it's half a carriage and it even features a victorian bathtub and separate shower in the bathroom 
Uh, so it really is that amazing experience. And we offer a butler service throughout. So there's always somebody dedicated to looking after you for the duration of the trip. Absolutely. And again, the, 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 the thing to emphasize on this that makes Rovos different from many other rail journeys is the fact that you have beautiful accommodations, super comfortable, private washrooms in every car. Uh, and again, depending on the category, uh, the Pullmans, I think there's, uh, is there four of them in a carriage in the Pullman category? Uh, five, uh, in five, five in the five Pullman. In the yeah, three, three in, in the Deluxe. Deluxe. Yeah. And yeah. two in the Royal, yeah. And, and two in the Royal Suite. So there's ample room. And how many carriages typically on this trip from Cape Town to Dar es Salaam would typically be on the train? It's usually 21 carriages in total. That does include the public lounge areas and, of course, the staff cars and um, what we call a guards van, which is the storage area at the front of the train. Uh, but 21 right. is the maximum for a passenger train in South Africa. Yeah, exactly. And that would be how many uh, passengers exactly on if there was 21 carriages? We have a maximum of 72 guests in 36 okay. rooms. Sharing. So if you, yeah, so if you think about 72 guests spread over uh, 21 rail cars, it's a, if, if there is a ratio for guests to rail carriages, <laughs> that would be the best in the business, I think. Um, uh, so anyway, so the staff ratio is two to one. So <laughs> yeah, well, there you go. So, um, so we'll roll out of Cape Town and make our way north up uh, through South Africa, and we'll see some great things along the way. I mean, you mentioned Matthias Fontaine, uh, or I think that comes after this, and then um, the big hole, as they call it. <laughs> Yes, no, the itinerary offers a great mix between historic and cultural tours, as well as the game activities. And Kimberley is one of those amazing historic tour stops um, where we get to visit the big hole and do some diamond shopping as well for those that are interested. Yeah, well, South Africa is a big producer of diamonds, as I think most of us know. Uh, and so uh, the, the landscape, again, very broad, open um, uh, plains. Uh, and, uh, you know, this is where the gold, the diamonds and all the rest of it comes from South Africa. So, but I know in those first uh, day or two aboard the train, we're just going to be soaking in all of this sumptuous atmosphere. We'll then head into Pretoria uh, for um, uh, um, South Africa's capital. Uh, tell us about the experience there and, and what we can expect to see. Well, Nicholas will be taking guests on a um, city tour of Pretoria, visiting the Fort Trekker Monument and uh, the Union buildings and other historic sites in Pretoria. But a big highlight is also the visit to the Rovos Rail Station, where guests get to see behind the scenes how we build the magic from the ground up, uh, touring our workshops, the locomotive sheds, um, and our beautiful rail museum that's on property as well. Yeah, I think that is a, that's a highlight for people to see how all this came together and the hundreds of people that worked together to make the Robos Rail, Rail experience possible. We The trip continues further north up into the northern part of uh, South Africa and Medikwe. And I know a lot of people that have been there. I haven't managed to get to Medikwe myself, uh, but it's among being referred to as being malaria free. Uh, what else about Medikwe, I think, uh, would you say is notable? We're going we're gonna to get off the train and stop at a lodge there, right? That's correct. We'll spend two nights at a game lodge. So you have that full safari experience with Boma dinners and four game drives included. Um, Medikwe, other than being malaria free, is also very well known because of their wild dog relocation pro project that they had. Um, the, um, wild dogs are really flourishing in that area. So if you, they're still difficult to spot, but your chances are just so much better here. And the same with their cheetah uh, population in Medique, it really is doing so well. And so those are two unique animals, well, not unique, but you know, animals that are rarely spotted that Medique offers you a better chance of seeing along with the regular big five. Along with the regular big five, if we're lucky, we'll spot some leopards along the way. Uh, always tough to see, but uh, I, uh, I think that with the time that we spend there, it'll be great to have this safari component. You know, also nice to spend a day or two off the train um, in sumptuous lodge accommodation. So again, this is the, what I like about this itinerary is, is that we're mixing this, you know, super posh train experience, but also really getting the game safari part uh, of, uh, of the adventure in 
uh, in Africa. So two nights off the train, all the meals, basically this pretty much all the same inclusions as you'd get on the train. So uh, this really, we can consider this pretty much an all-inclusive type trip. Um, when we head out of Medique, as I understand it, we rejoin the train in Botswana. So we'll cross the border into Botswana and, and get back on at Gaborone, which is the capital of uh, Botswana. Is that right? That's correct. Yes. Medique is actually bo uh, borders Botswana. So it's just a short drive across the border and we'll meet the train in Gaborone. Our staff will assist with all the border formalities. Um, as it is a coach transfer, guests will have to present themselves to the border officials, but it usually is a very quick and painless process. Yeah, exactly. And uh, I'm sure that uh, that Rovos has that down to a, a, a science now, so it should be quite easy. And so we we then pass into Botswana, which, you know, you won't, by looking out the window, you won't necessarily immediately notice the difference. But um, I guess this is part of the Kalahari. Is that uh, is that right in this part or? Yes, no, it is part of the Kalahari Basin, and I believe we also travel across the Tropic of Capricorn. Uh, it is a leisure day on board the train, and this is where our historian will really shine and keep guests entertained with his lectures and question and answer sessions until we cross the border at Plumtree into Zimbabwe, um, and then the following day arriving in a, at Victoria Falls. And Victoria Falls, and so there's tons of highlights on this trip, but I know that Victoria Falls, I remember the first time I went to see it, it is uh, amazing. And uh, that we are there at the time of the year when we should actually see some pretty good volume of water going over the falls, yeah? Yes, no, you're visiting at the best time of year, I think. Um, it's not that overpowering that you get soaked, but it is still so full and beautiful. You get to see all the rainbows forming at the, uh, at the falls. And of course, Victoria Falls is also the adventure capital of Zimbabwe, so I guess we'll have a full day at leisure to enjoy all the activities that are available from helicopter rides and elephant interactions, uh, more game drives if they're interested, and we do include a sunset cruise on the Zambezi River as well. On the Zambezi River, and so uh, this is what I remember from my experience in the past in Victoria Falls, as you say, there's any number of things you can do to enjoy and take in the falls. Um, I seem to recall having been down on the Zambezi below the falls doing some kind of river rafting or I don't know, I was in the water the whole time. That's all I can remember. But no matter what level of adventure you're into, you can sort of you'll have the time to admire this from all angles. Um, and once again, we'll spend the night off the train at the Victoria Falls Hotel. I've had the pleasure of staying there myself, an epic, another epic, iconic uh, property um, in uh in Africa. Um, what would you say about the, the, the Victoria Falls Hotel? <laughs> it's very much in keeping with the train, with that Edwardian style. It's known as the gr a grand old dame of the falls. So it's got a beautiful view of the gorge um, and it's walking distance to the falls from the hotel. Exactly. And so um, from the hotel, it's as, as, as um, Alicia said, everything is pretty much within walking distance, including getting a glimpse of this incredible bridge over which we will pass when we pull out of Victoria Falls. The train goes right across, the station is right there. Uh, and uh, yeah, no matter, no matter how you enjoy it, it's gonna be an enjoyable um, stay in the area around Victoria Falls. And then we cross the border and of course the Zambezi there forms the border between Zimbabwe and Zambia. So we get to the other side and, and do once again through our border formalities before we continue um, through Zambia, yes? That's correct, yes. Um, here, guests will hardly know that we've crossed the border. We take care of all the formalities, but they should keep their cameras handy uh, because if time allows, we'll have the opportunity to jump off the train and take a picture of the train on that bridge. So it really is a, a special moment. It's a special moment. I remember once being there, uh, seeing the train parked on the bridge and everybody jumping off for that quick moment to, um, to capture all of those uh, selfies and Instagram photos and so on. So we continue rolling up uh, the, the continent uh, as it were, as we make our way through Zambia. Um, and then uh, it's always nice to have a leisure day on board because we'll have had some busy days behind us. So it's a time to get, catch up on a few uh, Zeds as it were, or play some of those board games and so on and so forth. Um, uh, other than what you've mentioned already, is there anything else we should mention about days on board? Is Does the train stop at all during this uh, period of time or is it uh, pretty much where 
um, we're we're on the tra chain enjoying train enjoying us to the fullest. The train will always stop um, here and there to pick up fresh produce. Uh, we have to take some water on board, but there's no official um, excursions as such. I would recommend that guests stay in touch with the train manager if they want to stretch their legs while we're at one of these um, re uh, replenishment stops. They can take a walk on the platform and visit one of the local stores. Uh, but other than that, it's all about yeah. the enjoyment on board the train. Absolutely, absolutely. So it's sometimes nice to stretch your legs, but we don't want to leave without you. Um, we then will head up into uh, Ch uh, Chisimba Falls. Um, so this is beyond the territory that I'm familiar with. You'll have to give us a, a bit of a, a sense of what some of these stops are like uh, on this part of the trip. Uh, well, Chisimba Falls is in northern Zambia, Kisama. It's three consecutive waterfalls. Um, it is a, a religious area for a uh, spiritual area more for the Bemba people. Um, it's a beautiful bush walk down all these falls. And we then set up a drinks table next to the falls where we enjoy some sundowners. Um, there are local guides that can tell you more about the history in the area that um, and the, the legends that accompany the falls as well. So it's just a very nice, a refreshing bush stop. Yes, and absolutely. Then, yeah. And and so we really are in sort of some really remote parts of Africa here. Not you know in in South Africa, you could say that you would visit this or that um, on uh, uh, you know on an ordinary safari, as it were. But when you get here, this is really the part of Africa. And and what makes this trip special is is that we're seeing countryside that you know the vast majority will will never see and. Um, um, as I mentioned here on the lead in, it's um, um, Makambako, is that right? Yes, that's one of the local villages in Tanzania. Um, we travel along the Rift Valley, as your picture shows here, with lots of switchbacks, viaducts, and tunnels. Um, and then we have the opportunity to visit Makambako, where there's lovely local markets. If you enjoy um, shopping for materials and fabrics, there's great opportunity for local fabrics there, um, as well as a lot of fresh produce, which is very interesting to see um, what they have on the local markets. Undoubtedly, undoubtedly. And then the Rift Valley is, it's, as you say, itself, how the train weaves. I mean, this is where, you know, for train lovers, just the experience of riding the rails with all of the back and forth and the, um, is going to be uh, truly amazing. We then um, head up to Salus. Salus, is that, did I pronounce that right? Ah, it's a silent S, Salu. Salu, I should have guessed. Um, the biggest in all of Africa. Um, and so we're going to be doing the game drives right from the train here. Uh, and what might we expect here in Tanzania as compared to what we would have seen in uh, Medikwe in South Africa? Well, the Salu, uh, the game is a bit more um, skittish, if I can say. For years, it was, uh, unfortunately, uh, a big hunting area and some of the southern parts still is so if, to keep in mind when you're at Medikwe you would have experienced the game quite up close um, you know almost in touching distance but in the Salu the game tends to stay a bit further away from the vehicles um, what is magnificent here is the variety of the or the difference in vegetation um, we also do a lovely stop at a lake which has hundreds of hippos in the lake um, and there's also giant baobabs which are quite uh, unique um, and spectacular to see so it is just a very different game experience compared to the high felt experience in Medikwe. And that's what I always try to convey to people is, is that Southern Africa versus Eastern Africa, because we're now obviously in what's considered East Africa and Tanzania, is quite a difference on, on all fronts. And so, um, you know, it, it is a different safari experience. Um, and at and that point, is, we'll... Yeah. Sorry, Sorry I just wanted to mention that the Sudan yeah, yeah, are not the open plains that you would expect then of an East African safari. It is um, more bush and thickets, so... That's right. So which makes it a little bit trickier to see some game. But uh, as you say, at the same time, it's the overall experience of, uh, of that, that different um, landscape than what you um, but we would have found earlier in the trip. Um, so from there, we basically head into uh, Dar es Salaam. Uh, and our trip will will come to an end, at least the uh, the rail portion of our trip. 
and I guess we bid a farewell uh, in the, the morning after that we arrive into Dar es Salaam. Uh, and uh, yeah, overall, I think the rail journey would have been quite amazing. Um, at that point, we will have spent uh, 11 nights on board the train and three nights off. So overall, 15 day journey um, from South Africa all the way up to uh, Dar es Salaam in Tanzania. Um, and so uh, for those that wish, obviously, we can uh, bring you to, to, to the airport and you can sort of fly back home from there or to whatever onward destination. Um, we have put together a little post program uh, because although I can't exactly say that the train trip will have been strenuous, but in case you want to relax for a few days, uh, there is hardly a better place to do it than in Zanzibar. I'm sure at least you, you'd, you wouldn't disagree with me. Um, and so we've put together a wonderful program for four nights or uh, longer, if you wish, um, in Zanzibar, which, of course, is the Spice Island uh, and uh, is a, a very distinct culture. It's sort of semi-autonomous from the rest of Tanzania. It is best known for these incredible white sand beaches. Um, and we have um, selected uh, a resort on that incredible east coast of uh, Zanzibar where there are three different properties in three different categories. Uh, the Breeze Beach Club, um, all of which are along the same stretch of beach um, with the incredible blue water. And there's all sorts of activities to do as slow paced or as fast paced as you want. Um, but I think one of the most interesting things is the culture of Stonetown itself, the capital, um, uh, as well as the, you know this this spice um, growing, the spice agriculture, which is such which is sort of the um, main part of the economy there. Um, we have three different properties, as I mentioned: uh, the Breeze um, Resort, the Palms. Uh, with all sumptuous accommodation, these belong to some of the most beautiful um, resort properties in certainly in Zanzibar, if not all of the uh, East African coast um, and Baratza, which is um, was one of the top rated um, beach resorts uh, uh, of all around the world from Condé Nast. So there's a choice of three different properties um, for those that wish to join us for a few extra days in Zanzibar. Let me give you a quick up, um, information and our brochure is going to get sent out to you together with uh, the replay of this webinar uh, tomorrow. Uh, so we just had a slight delay uh, in pulling the brochure together. So our pre-program, so the first five nights, um, it, uh, which is not in lower deck, but rather in uh, double accommodation or in, in the hotels that I mentioned is going to come in at 29.90 double. Um, the inclusions for all of that, of course, it's uh, it's um, uh, you know a full uh, program with transportation and the five nights accommodation in the two different hotels, some tasting dinners, um, tours, uh, and again, uh, relaxing but not overtaxing way to lead into the program. Uh, the Rovos program itself, um, our lead in here uh, comes in all in Canadian dollars, of course, at nineteen six. This isn't the least expensive program that you've ever seen, um, but it is, uh, uh, call it, I think trip of the lifetime is, is uh, <laughs> hardly does it justice. Three categories there. We do have quite limited availability. In fact, uh, when we pre-released this program a, a while ago, we, we actually sold out uh, at least one of the Royal Suites available on the trip. Um, so uh, if you are interested, um, we don't have tons of space. Uh, but uh, you should uh, let us know. Uh, and again, I'm not going to go into all the details, but this is really an all-inclusive type experience. All of your meals on board, all of your beverages, alcoholic, non-alcoholic, except for anything obviously that's imported. Um, but you don't need to import anything to South Africa because everything they have is incredible. Um, all of the uh, safaris, everything is uh, part of this program from all the way in Cape Town until Dar es Salaam. And as far as our post-program, uh, is concerned. We have, again, three different properties that are available that are all directly adjacent, so we can still be um, as a small group, uh, no matter which of the properties that we choose, because they're next to one another in um, uh, on the beach in Zanzibar. Uh, and so uh, the only exclusions that we have here, of course, as usual, airfare, which we will arrange uh, for you, uh, depending on the routing and uh, the class of service and so on that you wish to travel in, insurance, which obviously would be highly recommended, um, and the visas, um, which uh, I've noted here, I think there is a univisa that is that pro program still in place uh, in between Zambia and, and uh, Zimbabwe, or did they abandon that? 
<laughs> the uni visa is in place, but unfortunately, it's not valid at the train borders. It's only ah. for airports. Um, so yeah. it will have to be individual visas for Zimbabwe. So we have to do the individual. But anyway, it's just a, it's a detail. We have a very competent visa agent uh, uh, company that we outsource to. So all of that is just something to be dealt with. Um, and uh, airfares, a little bit hard to tell this far in advance. Uh, we were looking recently at what we we're looking at. Um, for airfare into Cape Town and returning from Dar es Salaam. So just gives you a little bit of sense of what we're talking about based on economy class. But of course, I know that many of our members on this trip will probably prefer um, premium economy or, or business class. So uh, good. Well, that sums up the program. I'm sure we have a few questions. And while we've got Alicia here, let's uh, take a moment. And uh, if you do have any questions at all about the program, now is the time. Of course, uh, we are always available to answer your questions by dropping us an email or giving a call into the office. Um, and so Paula, um, let us yes. know what uh, questions have, uh, have come in. A good question um, Alicia can help us with would be, someone was asking about the um, availability of, of doing laundry while on this trip. Right. We actually include a limited laundry service complimentary on board the train. Um, by limited, I mean it is regular household washers and dryers, so we can't do a month's worth of washing. Uh, but at least, well, between five and ten items per person per day, the turnaround is usually 48 hours. We unfortunately just don't have dry cleaning facilities available, but regular wow. washing and pressing is complimentary. Yeah, That's which fantastic. is already fantastic service. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, I was just going to say the same. Um, another question that I have is what what could a member expect with regards to weather um, throughout the destinations we're visiting? July is a winter season, but it's in daytime temperatures in South Africa are always mild to warm. Um, it's never as cold as it gets in Canada, that's for sure. Uh, so early mornings and evenings could be a little chilly. Um, I'd say if it goes down to one degree Celsius, it's rare, uh, but daytime temperatures always in the 20s. And then as we travel northeast to, towards Dar es Salaam, it'll keep warming up. Um, by the time we reach Zimbabwe, it will be warm throughout mornings, evenings and daytime. Um, it is a nice time to travel because it's not the rainy season up in uh, Zambia and Tanzania, so it should be drier. Um, yeah, so it's it's cold to start, but it'll warm up as we travel. And I want to stress actually that uh, on this note uh, as to uh, because we had a couple of members ask us about the timing of it because you know it's it's July, June, end of June, beginning of July, summertime in Canada. You know who wants to travel? But because um, uh, the pro this program is offered at other times of the year, but uh, in terms of for us, it's all about the destination and uh, what the the climate and and what we can see along the way. And as far as game viewing as far as Victoria Falls are concerned it's about the best time that you can go and I think that you know when you're embarking on a trip like this and going to this expense you want to go at the best possible time to have the best experience that's why we chose uh, June and July so um, between the weather which is optimal and and uh, all those other things I think you would agree we had this discussion Alicia not that long ago um, and you said this is probably the best time to go that's absolutely right Gordon yeah I think it's the best time you can go. Absolutely. Cool. And uh, Paula, what are the other questions? Yep. There was another one that came in here. A member was asking what vaccinations are required for uh, travel uh, to some of these well, countries. Your COVID-19 vaccination is required <laughs> um, a lot, and it should be on uh, a verifiable uh, printout yes. with a QR code, preferably. That is really the only required vaccination. Uh, it is recommended to have yellow fever vaccinations. Um, the it is not a requirement to have it, but a lot of countries might request it when you come back home. I don't think Canada does though, but if you're traveling via Kenya, then you'll definitely need uh, the yellow fever. So just take care if you are adding any stops in other countries. Um, and then the, the other recommendations is malaria. It's, our trip is malaria free up until Botswana, but from there northwards, it is a malaria area. So do speak to your travel doctor for the best uh, prophylaxis. And then other recommendations, not requirements, 
um, is just the regular cholera, hepatitis. Uh, but again, your travel doctor would be able to advise you best. Exactly. Our, our advice always is consult with your travel physician um, and, uh, and, and use, um, well, common sense is the wrong way to put it. I think you have to inform yourselves accordingly, uh, but uh, we don't give out specific advice on that. We just say what the kind of things that you might be considering, but we are traveling in the tropics. And so um, some uh, preventative measure against tropical, uh, eventual tropical diseases is probably not a bad idea. Perfect. Good. Any other questions, Paula? One other question here was with regards to the group size, Gordon. Can you touch on that? Yeah, for sure. So, I mean, the group size, you know, the train holds 72 guests in total. Um, uh, I don't think that Wheel and Anchor will go with 72 guests. Um, we obviously want to have the optimal experience for our members. So I anticipate that, uh, you know, we'll probably be around 16 guests. Um, it may be a bit more than that. Um, for us, what's important is the guest to host ratio. Uh, and so, uh, you know, just like with Robos, uh, we, we try not to have uh, more than about 16, 18 guests for one host. Um, and should the group size get bigger um, in a trip like this, it's not really going to affect the experience because uh, we're going to be looked after in a very individual way by Robos. Um, as well as during our pre and post tours. So, um, so I wouldn't say that there's any specific group size. That's just what I'm anticipating that, um, that Wheel and Anchor will be going with. Perfect. That seems to wrap up the questions that I've had come in so far. Okay, fantastic. Well, um, then uh, please do let us know if you have any other questions. And uh, I will just mention that uh, to join us for our next webinar about our live away in the Amalfi Coast in Sorrento, which is where I'm headed from here, actually beginning of next week, uh, to uh, make sure everything is in order for our trip there in April of next year. Uh, I'd like to extend a my great uh, gratitude to Alicia for all the support, all the work that you've done in getting us the space on this trip. Uh, and of course, uh, all, the, all the wonderful support of you and the whole team at Robos. Thank you very much. And have a good time in North America while you're here. Thank you. Yes, <laughs> and, I'm getting over the jet lag. <laughs> I'm sure, I'm sure. And thank you to all of our members for coming out today. Um, please do get in touch with us if you're interested at all in putting your name on the list for this program. Uh, we'd love to have you aboard. This is a super exciting one. Uh, and uh, I will, um, yeah, I look forward to seeing you all in an upcoming webinar and have yourselves a wonderful rest of the day. Thanks very much, everyone. Bye-bye.